I'll show you how to add and manipulate text in Affinity Photo. With all the Affinity apps in general, we have access to two text tools on the Tools panel, Artistic Text and Frame Text, which can be accessed from the Tools flyout by holding the mouse button down. I'll select the Artistic Text tool first. This is primarily for isolated text scenarios, such as headlines and titles. I can click drag on my document view, which allows me to draw out the initial size I want my text to be at. Once letting go of the mouse button, I can now begin to type out my text. Now at this point, I will want to completely change the formatting of my text. If I wanted to modify certain words or characters individually, I could click drag to make a selection, then change my formatting options on the context toolbar. Alternatively, to clear the selection and return to editing, I can use the escape key. Then if I want to change the formatting of all the characters, I can press escape again to come out of editing mode. I can then use V to select the move tool, which will also let me reposition and scale the text at the same time as changing its formatting. I'll change the font first to something more suitable for this composition. Then I'll also change the font color to white. I might now decide that I want to split the two words up and use a different font for York. With the Move tool selected, I can switch back to the Artistic Text tool quickly by double clicking on the text here. Then I'll select the space and the word York and use backspace to delete those characters. Now I'll use Escape, then V to reselect the Move tool and I'm going to move this text layer slightly and then duplicate it. I can do this a number of ways, but one method is to hold Command on Mac, Control on Windows, and click drag. This lets me drag away a copy of the text layer, and I can release the mouse button to commit this and create a new copy on the layers panel. Now I'll double click into this text and change it to York. I'll use Escape, then V once again and I'll change the font for this second text layer. Then I'll use the Move tool to reposition it slightly over the original text and also scale it down. I want to set this York text color to something other than white so it stands out against the original text. On the Font Color dialog, I'll click drag on the Color Picker Well icon here and hover over one of the yellow tones down here. Then I'll release the mouse button, and to assign this color, I can just single click the color picker well. Now I want to change the tracking and possibly also the horizontal scale of the text. I can do this on the character panel. Clicking on this icon on the context toolbar will quickly bring the panel up. Here is the tracking option. I can select a value between minus 50 and 50% on the drop down. Or alternatively, hovering my cursor on the drop down box, I can scroll up and down on the mouse wheel to change the value in small increments. For larger value changes, I can click drag on the tracking icon and move the cursor left or right to change the tracking quickly. I'll want to change the horizontal scale of the text as well. That's this option, and I can click drag on the icon once again to reduce the scale. However, it's worth pointing out that we can also change horizontal scaling with the Move tool selected. Click dragging on the left or right nodes around the layer bounding box will allow me to scale none proportionally. Notice the horizontal scale on the character panel is also changing. Once I'm happy, I'll close the character panel and shift click to select both text layers on the layers panel. Then I'll scale them up together. This uses non aspect correct scaling by default. I can hold down Shift to force aspect correct or proportional scaling. Then I'll move the two text layers to a more central position and rotate them slightly. Then I'll just single click to select the York layer and perhaps move it slightly so it encroaches less on the original text layer. 
Finally, a common workflow for artistic text is to add layer effects. I'll shift click to select both text layers. Then I can add effects by going to Window, Quick Effects. And this exposes the Quick Effects panel on the right. I'll add some quick drop shadow by enabling Outer Shadow, dragging the radius up, then clicking on the Offset Tool button, which will allow me to click drag directly on the document view to set the offset and angle of the drop shadow. Once I've finished, I can use H to switch to the View tool, which will stop me from accidentally editing anything else. This whole editing process is completely non-destructive, however. So if, for example, I wanted to revise the drop shadow effect, I am still able to do this. Then I might actually decide I want the effect to be weaker on the York text. So I can switch to the Move tool, then select just the York text, then modify the opacity independently of the new text. Now I'll show you how to add and modify frame text with this next example. Frame text is more suitable for body text that comprises full sentences and paragraphs. I'll long click into the text tools flyout here and select the frame text tool. Then I'll click drag into this area of the composition and release the mouse button to create a text frame. I can quickly add some filler text by right clicking this text frame and choosing Insert Filler Text. I'll select all the text using Command A on Mac, Control A on Windows. Then I'll change the font color to white. Similar to artistic text, I can use Escape twice, then V to switch to the Move tool, and I can now change any other font formatting parameters for the whole body of text. So here, I'll change the font, and I might try changing the font style to medium. And also, if I zoom in, I can try adding an outline to the text characters without using the Quick Effects panel. On the color panel, I'll switch across to the stroke color, which is currently set to no color. Then I'll change it to black at a regular 100% zoom level. This adds a very subtle outline around the text. I can then adjust the scaling of the text frame, and rather than scaling the font size, like with artistic text, it will flow the text content instead. Finally, I can change the alignment, for example, to justified left, and then I can access both the character and paragraph panels by clicking the respective icons on the context toolbar. On the character panel, I might increase my tracking to 25%. Then I could make any other changes here if I needed to, but I am happy with how the text looks, so I can click on the cross icon to hide both panels. Then I'll do some final resizing of the text frame. Finally, I can switch to the view tool using H to see how the text looks without a bounding box around it. And there we go. That was a look at both artistic and frame text in Affinity Photo. Don't forget that these tools function the same in both Affinity Designer and Affinity Publisher as well, so any experience you gain using text in one app easily translates to the others. Thank you for watching.